Now I guess the next thing we gotta do is deal with this hydraulic cylinder. As you can see, the top of it looks all wet and oily. And that's because it is leaking. It's been leaking for as long as I've owned this tractor, although I did not realize it at first. And uh, so basically what we gotta do is pull this off of here, disassemble it, go to the seal place that Mechanic Steve recommended, and buy some stuff and shove it all back together. Uh, I can't even really see the bottom of this. I think that's just a mashed over cotter pin. I know this isn't the best camera angle for you guys, but like I myself can barely even see what I'm doing. Ah, how is it even possible they've managed to bend the other half too so I can't even grab onto it properly? Okay, I'm gonna try to find a better pin for when we put that back in. Great, now there's just the upper section. There's no way it was that easy. Oh yeah! So anyway, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna grab this thing by that little slot with uh, whatever this wrench is technically called and we'll see what happens. Oh look, there's another slot under here. Oh no, it can't, no, we're just spinning the whole thing of a jigger, dang it. Uh, let's try going this way. It was expensive, but when you need a good air hammer, you need a good air hammer. All right, now, I don't know if I put this in here before, but this is my first time ever redoing a hydraulic cylinder. So I really have no idea what I'm doing, but this looks like the only thing that comes apart on this. So hopefully it's as easy as we just rip this whole thing out, pick out the old seals, go to the seal place and shove it all back together. But we're kind of learning together here and I wanted to film it for y'all. Oh, yep. All right, okay, cool. Well, there's our problem. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but those things that look like giant O-rings are split in multiple places and that one's straight up missing a chunk. I guess that's why it was leaking. All right, uh, now I'm gonna take this smaller wrench and I guess we just kind of have to unscrew this thing, which I, to be honest with you guys, I kind of expected this to be a hex nut, but oh. But it isn't. Oh, I love that thing as much as any man should love a pneumatic tool. That was not a cheap air hammer. A cheap air hammer hits very lightly. That thing, ah. Oh. I don't understand the physics, but it's 100 times better than the $25 one that I had. It was pretty pricey, I will be honest, but every single time I use it, just like most tools I saved up and paid a little, some would say a little too much for. Super glad I have it, no regrets. All right, well that's just an incredibly weird looking fitting or whatever, but it's off, so that's all that matters. Now I'll set it in all this grit on the welding table. And does this thread off or just rip off? Yep. All right, well that is how I fix most things anyway. And then all this comes out. Man, this is disgusting. I don't really know what the seal shop is gonna want on this or like taken off of it, so I'm not I'm not gonna mess with this. I'm just gonna take these two pieces there. And actually, is that another one? Yeah, that's an O-ring. All right, I have O-rings. That one should be fine, but these two things, we're just gonna take to the uh, seal shop and we'll see what they come back with. All right, so we're finally back on the Zetter. I had some other stuff I had to take care of today, but I went out and I picked up the hydraulic parts from the local shop and uh, it actually went a little bit better than expected. I had to leave the two chunks of the cylinder that I left with them overnight. 
uh, while well, they ordered in the new seals and I'll try to drop a picture of the description of all this in here just on the off chance that somebody else needs to reseal this as well because I bet once you know exactly what you need you can find those like on the internet or something have them shipped right to your house save all the trouble but these guys were awesome because they completely here I'll show you this they completely cleaned up these parts I don't know how but they're immaculate and uh, now, as you can see, they are um, having new seals on them. They popped them on. But it's basically just these two things that are kind of like a cross between O-rings and rubber bands. An O-ring there, and then two more of these little urethane or whatever they're called seals down in there. So now, I just got to remember how all this goes back together. This I don't really like to see. There's some uh, flakiness in the chrome plating on this, which is unfortunate. But I guess we'll just try and get it super smooth so that way it's not as abrasive against the seals. It's unfortunate, but that's pretty much how <laughs> about all farm equipment is. Yeah. Pretty sure that goes like that. Then we got this thing. Oh, that goes in tight. It's already pressurizing air out this hole here. You know what, I don't think we have to ram this all the way together. That's a tractor's job, isn't it? Okay, let's try and shove this thing back on the tractor. Now unfortunately, I have misplaced that one wire clip that came off of this thing and the other one didn't have one, it had that jankety pin on it. So, I'm just gonna wire this on here. Now one other thing I did uh, that I didn't film is I cleaned all the mating surfaces like here and here and likewise on these banjo bolts and I got new copper washers for them. <clears throat> it is important just to keep those on hand for situations like this. The upper hose was not that bad, the lower one that one was the one that was a battle. All right, we got oil in. Took uh, somewhat close to 10 gallons, I'm not sure exactly. And I guess might as well fire this monster up. And what I want to do is hook it to my heaviest three-point implement, which is my big seven-foot shredder. And that's actually what has to go on here anyway, because I want to take this thing out to one of my hay fields probably in like three days or so. Because <clears throat> people who own that property are doing some work out there. And I uh, want to give them plenty of space. So, all right, let's see here. Ah, I forgot to prime the hand pump. The hand pump, all right, it's, it's like 70 degrees. It'll probably start. Okay. It's a working. A little herky jerky because obviously there's still going to be some air in that cylinder. This is its first rotation.
and it's not like a four or five foot one this thing's seven feet wide so there's a lot of gravity in this thing and as you can see i don't see a drop leaked anywhere oh i'm so happy with this we're losing our little doobly-doo though Ugh. now i've got to go get ready to go shred a hayfield and how do i feel about this pretty good to be honest I feel like this would be about the perfect repair other than the scoring on that cylinder. That is going to eat away at that wiper seal. Uh, if you want to do it right, you take the cylinder to a real deal like commercial industrial hydraulic place and they can have it re-chromed. Uh, but that, that's expensive and it's a pain. If you want the broke farmer fix, you, uh, you get that receipt and figure out exactly which seal that's going to grind away at. And you go on eBay and you buy like 10 of them for a dollar a piece and you just plan to swap it out every year. Uh, so I'll probably try to have this re-chromed, but not right now. I know this is not ideal, but by the time I discovered it was like that, I'd already committed to doing this, so I might as well get my dollars worth. Someday if it starts leaking again, I'll take it to the uh, place Steve recommended. So anyway, uh, but that's my specific application. This is my first time ever rebuilding a hydraulic cylinder. I've replaced them. I've had two that I wanted to rebuild, but one, the bore was all scored from rust and the other was on that Fiat baler and it just, no, literally no one could get it apart. Like three, four different people tried. And uh, anyway, so yeah, I had to replace that. How, what do I think of the job? This is bloody excellent. Everybody should do this. There's no reason to tolerate having leaky hydraulic cylinders on stuff. This was super easy. Uh, pretty much just take it apart. It's just, it's as simple as it gets take it to a seal shop pay like 30 bucks for the seals and they even put them on for me and then you just stick it all back together it's, it's actually a really simple job it's nothing to be afraid of and uh yeah now i know how to do this so well i mean i guess i always everyone knows how to do this it's, it's a very simple concept you got your thing and your seal and the seal goes bad but now i've actually done it so i'm not afraid to do it again on other things however I would do a couple things differently. I would, uh, number one, make it a point to make sure that the seal isn't, or that the chrome rod isn't scored before you commit to that. On this, like I said, the new cylinder, it's like $450. It takes three weeks to get here, so I probably wouldn't have done it. But on another piece of machinery where it's, if it's a $50 to, for parts and fuel and everything to rebuild the cylinder, or you can get a new one for 150. In that case, if you inspect this properly before you order the seals, I would just go ahead and buy the replacement. But it's one of those things you just kind of have to make your own decision on. And um, yeah, yeah. Um, the only other thing I would have done is made it a point to take pictures of that cylinder as it comes apart. Cause like that thing on the bottom of the other thing, you can tell I'm a real mechanic here. I, I wasn't really sure if that faced up or down and I made an educated guess and put it in. It seems to work fine, but I wish I'd taken a couple pictures so I knew. But anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe for more. I'm gonna go play with this dog's stick. Is that your stick? All right, yep, thanks for watching everyone.